you, we all know those people that are, you know, paper people or they, um, they're constantly on social media and so they grab a ton of people. Or like the president of the, one of the local banks in Ann Arbor, Bank of Ann Arbor, he loves the handwritten note and is constantly talking about how important it is for him in business to be sending a handwritten note. And for us, that was an instant partnership. You like the handwritten note? I've got the things that you need to write that handwritten note. And so, um, you know, like that. But like we're on University of Michigan's campus. We got Jim Harbaugh, the new Michigan football coach, to tweet about us. That was huge. Right. You know, things like that. Yeah, no, like, is a football coach going to help us sell stationery? I don't know. But all of a sudden, we have a lot of Ann Arbor people that know us as, oh, yeah, Jim Harbaugh likes you. You know, so that that's cool. So, so you're cool. A apparently. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Yeah. What do you could and you your social media postings are mostly around the, the merchant and it's the merchant and we and Daniel Richards too. We you know, I I I wasn't interested in Facebook that much really and I really have never did much with tweeting or Twitter. Uh, but all of a sudden Instagram really, really spoke to me and so I I found it really interesting. I love to spy on people and look at people and what they were posting and who was following them and who they're following. To me it's all, it's fascinating. I could do this at night, you know, on a Sunday and kind of, you know, binge and do it. But we, we hired a full-time employee to take pictures of the store and yeah, it totally works for Instagram. And anything we put on there, it sells or they're, and they communicate between each other about your store and how do I get it and, and pricing and do you ship and all that good stuff. I mean, it's almost like an online retail, but really it's, you know, it's still just a store. Like, you need to follow him on Instagram. It's inspiration for days, every single time. They do. They, they like, style beautiful shots of product, the little vignettes that are little art masterpieces, yeah, it, you know. I found somebody who wanted to do it as opposed to making somebody do it, which, which means a huge difference. And so, you know, the young lady who works for us, she's, you know, she's young and she, she enjoys it. And so, you know, it makes it fun for everybody. I've also noticed people are like, you'll be a Facebook person or you're an Instagram person. Like people like naturally tend to gravitate towards one, you know, or I'm a Pinterest person, whatever. <laughs> Emily, what about you? What do you, what have you learned? Um, I am also an Instagram person. Um, I was a Facebook person and then Facebook changed their algorithm so nobody really sees our posts on Facebook anymore so I've kind of gravitated away from that and towards Instagram and I love Instagram um, personally one of the things I like doing and one of the things I think I hear that people appreciate about my Instagram is that I don't do like the careful vignettes like I sort of I do like real small business stuff and people tend to really like the behind the scenes, like this is what it's really like, this is the real sort of, the real story behind what's happening. And so I do a mix of kind of that stuff and sharing products and I use it a bit as a focus group when sometimes when I have products that are in development um, and I want to get, take the temperature on something, if I'm like, am I the only person who thinks this is funny? Do you guys get this? It's weird, like what do you think? And so sometimes I'll put a sketch up to see what people think and people really like feeling like they're part of the process that way and that's fun for me um, and yeah I, I, I really like Instagram um, I find that it's uh, it's a really it's really engaging and it's not a ton of work for me Twitter is hard because I can't keep up with it and I find that it's uh, it's just too much work to for me personally to keep up but Instagram is kind of a nice balance of the Facebook and the Twitter you know Although on Facebook you posted that funny series about your neighbors, which was like hysterical. Which one? Yeah. The neighbors, like the people in the next studio over. Oh, so oh, on one Skrillex was my neighbor. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so and what what would you tell people not to put in posts? Like, what are the mistakes, the lessons learned that? Yeah. Okay, here's a story for you. So you guys, some of you guys have already heard this, but on our Instagram account, I posted a picture of a hamburger that I was having for lunch, and then everybody kicked, then they kicked me off. So they then, they, then off. they kicked me off Instagram. The the kids that are running our Instagram for the store, they're like, you can't do that. So no food is the rule. <laughs> no food, nothing that you're eating or drinking. They don't want to see that. They don't. They don't think that's appropriate. 
Okay, okay. I just have a different perspective on it. Um, it's not, we, we have a very decided channel for um, our, our Facebook uh, posts are, are about engaging with our community every single day, all day long. And we, I mean, it is, it's crazy what happens on Facebook between Ashley and I sitting here. We answer people personally. And that has, I mean, we, our, our participation in the Facebook community is so great that it, it rivals people with millions of followers. Like it's that we don't have a lot of Facebook fans. I mean, I think it's like forty thousand or something. But the the level of engagement is crazy. And so these people look to us every day and they ask their questions. It's almost like an extension of customer service. And and I feel like that it is their way of reaching me and talking to me. And so we do that when that's our fir very first foot forward. And what's been really great has been giving away things consistently. And I know if you've got extra, you know, inventory, that's something you can easily do to promote, you know, on Facebook, giving it away so that they know to come and they know if, if you're doing something there that, that you'll you'll give it away and you'll let people know who won it. But we also use my blog. Our subscribers to the blog are about the same amount. We post every single week, and that blog is a communication about what's going on, and, and it's it's either a how-to or it's a, a why. You know why craft, why make this, or why why carry this tote bag, kind of thing. But Pinterest is all about inspiration for us, so we're putting our first our first foot forward for Pinterest in everything everything you could do with our product. And YouTube is the same way; it's the video of how to do what we do with our product. So we're we're exercising every one of them. And then Instagram is also my personal favorite, but it's also mine. It's my personal life. So it's work and life and my cat and no food, <laughs> but but I do use it that same way because they're watching, you're watching, and people engage with you like no other way. This all didn't exist until recently, you know, in the last five years. We grew very organically, and I, I would say anybody that resists it, start it because it'll just it'll just grow and it gives you so much pleasure to talk to people like that, right? You love reading about other people, but let people read about you. So let them in. Emily, anything you've learned, I mean, any missteps you've made that you've learned from on social media? Missteps, yeah. Not missteps, missteps. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I don't know, not necessarily missteps. I think, um, Something that's been challenging for me is uh, having named the business after myself. Mm -hmm. um, as we've grown, I found that I can't do all of our social media anymore. Um, and But it feels disingenuous when your company is your own name and you are not doing the social media for that company. And so that's been kind of a real problem for us is figuring out how to how how to have me delegate that to somebody else and not not Instagram necessarily but some Twitter some of the other places that I really want to be that I just can't do it and how to make that feel um, feel like it's not people aren't being lied to they think they're talking to me as a person and then realize they're not yeah um, yeah no I can imagine yeah. so I find like on social media, like, it almost takes a while to develop your voice or, like, your tone. Like, are you going to be silly? Are you, hey, guys, come on down. Or is it going to be like, look what we just found. Or, you know, and, and I guess you just find what's comfortable for you and it's just constantly being modified, would you say? Or? For me, and I think that's another thing that's hard, is that for me, social media, it's me. It's me. I mean, it all started out as me, and so it's just very authentically who I am, and I didn't, and my brand is also very much who I am, and so I didn't cultivate a specific uh, type of persona or voice for social media. And so now, also, we're in the position where somebody else, if someone else in my company is trying to do social media, they need to sound like me, which is a little hard because we can't, you know, it's it's hard to we can't sound like each other. Um, yeah. She sounds just like me if she wants to. It's amazing. <laughs> Social media bodyguard. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Yay, social media bodyguard. 
Okay. Um, Dan, uh, did you find any new lines for your showroom? And what qualities would you say you look for in for in every line in your showroom? I, I haven't found anybody yet. I have there's some offers out, and so we're, there's a couple that we're really looking at that we really like. And uh, well, you will see that we pick up the Easy Tiger, which is here, uh, and so that'll be new for us. And we picked up a new personal care line that's not here. But there's a couple of breeding car lines that we're, we're very interested in, and you know we we like from you know big is always good, but also we like we like a little tiny, different, interesting, fun, desirable. Uh, I like to pick up lines that I think that you know have a future. And who can, you know, they have more than one release in them or more than one year in them. You know, I like to, you know, I like to think that I can see, you know, what's coming and they, right. can, they can see as well. So, yeah, there's, there's some really good stuff out there. Right, right. And to me, it seems like, I mean, the best lines, they can't look like anybody else. Right. And that's, you know, Right. We're looking for, we're looking for different. Different is good. And distinctive, yeah. But not too distinctive, because if it's too distinctive, it might not always sell. Like, it might, I mean, it's such a fine line between being trendy and commercial. Like, you want it to sell, but you want it to be interesting. And it has some, you know, some mass appeal to it as well, so that, you know, the customer in, you know, Tennessee can buy it, and the customer in Illinois can buy it as well. So, in California. Right. Now, Lee said, you um, you have two stores. I mean, Rock, Paper, Scissors is how old? Three, four years. four years old. And then Bed and Butter is one... Six months. Six months old. Yep. So, it's a baby. Do, you, do the wares carried by Bed and Butter... I mean, uh, Bed and Butter. Know, it's a mouthful. It's totally different. Um, do they differ from, from those for Rock, Paper, Scissors? What are you looking for for each store? Well, Rock, Paper, Scissors is a stationary and gift store through and through, where bed and butter is great bedding and great kitchenware and more of the, the home side of things. Um, we have a, a good bridal registry and sell, you know, like place settings, etc. And so um, with that, we definitely have a different uh, feel in mind than we do at Rock, Paper, Scissors. At Rock, Paper, Scissors, it's really just kind of like a, a gut decision when I'm looking at stuff. I don't, there's no rhyme or reason if I think it's going to sell or if I love it or if I'm standing in the booth and, it la and I laugh. Like, that's typically something that I bring in. And like I mentioned before, for us, the cheekier the better. And that works in Ann Arbor. We're at, or at Rock Paper Scissors in Ann Arbor. At Bed and Butter, it's um, an older client. It's a much more refined taste. It is like... Right now at that store, we sell um, pretty much exclusively sugar paper and antiquaria, and that's that's it. It's a, a, a it looks like a, a finer line or like finer, more refined uh, goods. And so at the at the show here, I'm just kind of looking for another you know something else I can add if I need to, and if I don't, I'm happy with the the two that we have. So have you bought any new lines here? Oh gosh, I'll be. <laughs> You guys couldn't tell. I don't necessarily have a rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this, but um, I have spent the time with my pre like my vendors that we we carry, and so um, I bought back into their lines and gotten really excited about a lot of the new stuff. Um, and I actually, I don't believe I've actually ordered anything from a new vendor yet, but I'm here for a whole other day, so I'm sure that that'll that'll happen. Emily, now you have an advertising background, and when I, when we profiled you, you said, you know, advertising is so different in that design trends are not shared the way they are in stationery. Um, with that said, um, are you seeing anything that's inspiring you that you kind of take home, think about, and put your own spin on? Um. You know, honestly, I really try very hard to not be inspired by other stationers' work. Um, I can I draw inspiration from different other things, um, but my background really, you know, it, it is true that in the design industry where I come from, um, it's very frowned upon to do anything that's been done before or to do anything that anyone else is doing. And so it is definitely a shift in thinking to come into stationary and gift where when something does well it's just considered a trend and then there are a lot of people who, who just do that thing um, and I just personally I, that's not how 
that's not how I'm, I'm do my work right, or I'm right. to work. Yeah. Um, and so I don't really, I don't really come here. I mean, I'm inspired by the level of creativity and I'm inspired by how hard people work and I'm inspired by all of that and like the energy that people bring to this. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely inspiring. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like looking at a specific design aesthetic choice or trend, I really try not to do that. So yeah. what does inspire your design choices? Um, you know, honestly, everything from old textile design to nature to just think architecture, things that are not, things that are outside of our industry. Yeah. yeah. What's the first thing you're going to work on when you get home? Um, I'm going to sleep when I get home. <laughs> Um, I am going to work on work business infrastructure. I mean, that's the most boring answer, but it's really true. Um, I probably won't be able to do any new creative for about three months uh, after I get home, just because we've got a lot of business stuff to take care of. Right. right. Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah. that has to get done. Totally. So, totally. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah, what is the first thing you're going to work on when you get home? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> well. I need to do a new quilt collection. We sell quilting fabric, and I haven't done one in a year. It's terrible. We just had quilt market at the same time as stationery show. Oh right, I remember we, we that. We did in Concord. It was in Minneapolis. It ended yesterday. And so everybody said, "Where's your quilt collection?" So I go do that. <laughs> um, but right now we're working on um, our uh, October Beachison shows, which are all about Christmas crafting. And so those are the deadlines. It's all about the deadline. <laughs> Oh, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> but June, June 1st is all about next year, so everything that comes. I love to use this show. Um, I, I, I spent a great deal of time at Surtex, and if you've never been, you should go. Um, just because it's just so great that you want to talk about talent in this part of the building. The talent is really over here. And so I look, you know, I everything I do is based on old things. So I buy, you know, 18th, 19th century things and turn them into new things. Um, and so that's my background, but so I buy things over there and I get really excited about it. So whatever I buy here, I turn into next year's product. So, so June 1st, that's, God knows, maybe it's purple. I'm not sure what's next, but it's gotta be some new color. Right. And uh, we touched on trends, but I'm wondering, I mean, like, are any of you getting a gut feeling about what is next? I mean, I, I still see foil. It seems to be a little more refined. Um, a lot of foil. I do see a lot of cheek. Um, cheekiness, rather, um, and uh, not cheek. And uh, what what do you guys say? What do you think? I, I, I certainly think the cheekiness is there, the fun, funny. Okay, so here's something for you. Here, if there's a line out there, text, text, not text messages, but cards with text in them, text-driven design. So go look at Sapling Press. So these girls have this really cool line, and it's all very wordy and worded and fun and funny. And I think it's interesting, and I think it's different, and I think it's going to do really well. It's really starting to take off. So we bought that for the store, and, and I, think, I think it's fun. Of course, you should buy it. You know, of course. Go get that stuff, because it's, it's white hot. Not red hot, but white hot. Absolutely. Uh, oh, so it's Sapling, Sapling Press. Press. There's a lot of great stuff out there, a lot of great stuff. But I like. I thought Sapling Press was, was different and fun. Do you do that? Yeah. Dan, do you try to do you tend to test drive a line in your store before you show before you take it from the showroom? How does that work? Not 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 really not you know, not very often, but you know that I can. And, and we you know we kind of know if it's gonna you know if it's gonna work or not work. But yes, so like Lady Finger Press, we we put that in the store. It did really really well, and so now I'm you know I decide that line. I, you know we want to rent that line, so we're you know of course we're talking to them. Okay. All right. Great. Um, well, I guess those are all my questions. So now we can take some questions from the audience, if anyone has any. <laughs> or not. <laughs> anyone? Oh, yes. Over here. Oh, yeah. We have this. The AP guy, Tommy, promises his me this works. Okay, <laughs> there's one lady you. over there. Okay. So who has the question? Okay. Uh, we'll get to you, we'll get to you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, thank you guys. Hi. Are you interesting thoughts? 
Um, as designers, contributors, and distributors, how do platforms like Etsy and communities like Minted change the game of the stationary marketplace? That's a good question. I should have. Etsy, Minted, and uh, yeah, that have they changed the marketplace? I bet it's changed. Yeah, tell you. Yes. <laughs> Hands down, yes. Sorry, I love Minted personally. Uh, I think they ra they definitely raised the game for all of us in this industry, and then they made they made something really highly designed, and very accessible. Um, and Etsy, you know, as a as a business owner, as as a maker, as, like I'm all these things. I, I love what it's done because it raised every one of our games, right? It, it, I don't. I, I think I come from a place where there's enough for everybody. I'm not not a scarcity kind of driven person. I so the advent of those things I think has been a blessing to all of us. Right, absolutely. I feel like Martha Stewart raised the taste level of everybody, you know, in the '90s, and you know, Etsy and Minted are doing it now. You're on. Are you still on? We are. I started on Etsy. Um, I started on Etsy. I was freelancing and advertising, and I opened an Etsy store to sell illustrated prints. Um, and I wanted to do cards as well, but I couldn't figure out how to make money selling cards. So I, it took me a while to do it. And I have one idea for a Valentine card that I had never seen that kind of card before. And I printed 100 and put it on Etsy, and it ended up going viral. And that was what started my company. Um, the the both the support, the viral support, and the groundswell of um, just the number of people that bought that and shared it made it clear to me that there was a my voice, there was a place for my voice in stationery. Mm -hmm. And then the money that I made from that card was what got me to the stationery show my first year. Um, and then I launched my wholesale line. So Etsy was really the I mean Etsy was the basis for my business really in the beginning. I've noticed some retailers in the past have had a little hesitation about stocking an Etsy retailer. They feel like, well, if they can just go online. Do, you, do either of you stock people with Etsy shops? Does that intimidate you? Do you care? Like, I, I mean, it's not. I don't. I don't care if they come from Etsy or if it's great work. You could come up to me on the side of the street, and if I think it's great, then I'll sell it. Um, the concern is like you have to read the details of the Etsy listings. So I want to know if I'm buying cards, what stock of paper they're coming with, if it's coming with an envelope. One time I bought a line of cards, I just didn't come with an envelope, didn't come soloed, and so I get a bunch of unfolded. They they were just like the came straight from the printer, um, unfolded, unsoloed, unenveloped cards, and so that will be you do that once and you're never gonna do that again. And so I just think you have to pay close attention to the details. And most, um, if it is a smaller Etsy artist and there's something that you're super interested in, I've never had anyone say no when I've asked for a sample. So, great, great. Did you, what about you? What did it doesn't matter to me if they sell on Etsy or not. You know, I think if it's, if it's sellable, if it's good, if it's, if it's funny or cute, then you know, it works. It totally works. You gotta start somewhere. Right. Yes. Uh, you were saying that your invitation business is down in terms of custom, but then Anna, you said that you switched to custom. So I'm just curious about what the reasons are and what the future is for customization. So for us, we we never custom was never big for us. And we we at best we sold the albums. We never we never did any design. We never that was always between the retailer and the manufacturer. And so that was always a business that was separate from what we were doing in the beginning in the first place. Does that help? And then Anna. I agree. I agree because he's in the middle. So he would rep our line and sell our finished goods. But then we would be selling those books to those retailers, and it was the relationship with me and the retailer at that point. So from a rep group standpoint, that makes total sense. And from a manufacturing standpoint, me directly to you and your customer is the way that we, I mean, we've seen an enormous surge. So it almost depends on the channel. Like, you know, if someone wants an Anna Griffin invitation, they're going to find it. They're going to find that retailer and get it if they. They want something more 
immediate. Well, we're also like doing direct advertising, like in Martha Stewart weddings, and we're listing the stores that carry the albums, and then the consumer sees that, tears it out, you know, it goes in, I want that. So that's kind of how that's how that thing. Right. The channels have changed, I think, a lot in the last decade or so. I know we had a question over here. Yes. Kathy, uh, that lady, yeah. Yes. <laughs> For those uh, designers not working with the reps, what have you found uh, to be the most intriguing type of advertising or uh, way to lead it outside of Etsy or reps? So the question is, for those designers not working with reps, what has been the most, here, I didn't catch the end, I'm sorry. It's essentially with mailers, or um, trying to reach out in other ways, cold calls, or whatever it is, what do you find the most effective and intriguing? Um, so in terms of effective forms of marketing for us, um, honestly, Instagram is my most effective marketing tool. It's free and it is when somebody and social media overall is so much more effective than any other form of advertising and I worked in advertising forever I mean I made commercials I did all that big agency stuff for a long time and the word of mouth endorsement from somebody else that comes as a result of social media is ten times as effective as any marketing mailer that I can send to you so my personal marketing strategy since I started my company has been to make products that people want to share. And then I let the products do the work for me instead of trying to push with my own marketing um, because I find it's much more effective to create products that do the work from, from that end and then find ambassadors of people that want to share the products, um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. If I yeah, can how do you. people reach out to you? Well, I think like, and the mailer side of things, like sending a mailer to a retailer is, I'm not gonna not buy your product because you're, you sent me a mailer, and I'm not gonna buy your product because you sent me a mailer. And so I think if you only have a set budget, I don't think that a mailer is an effective tool at all. I would spend my money like perfecting my brand or you know some, using something else. Uh, but I truly think getting the actual product in front of a retailer is for me the only thing that uh, that works to like stop in your tracks and say okay wow this is this is awesome this is great quality this is uh, something that would really fit with what I've got going on uh, but I need that product in my hands to be able to do that so it's almost like you target the stores you want and reach out to them directly and I mean do you have you bought product by someone mailing you a random card and been like, yeah, we'll try. It doesn't keep saying no. Uh, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I guess that's how I bought. I bought. A, I bought a couple. Like, but I believe very strongly that as retailers, I don't know how many people are retailers. Uh, it's our responsibility to know what's out there. It's our responsibility to do the research and to always know, be like one step ahead of a trade show, so that when you're coming here, you know exactly who's going to be here and that nothing is surprising. And so, I don't know if there's. Like I would be disappointed in myself if I got a mailer from somebody that I didn't didn't know about through any sort of research or you know reading blogs and being very active on social media. So I don't think a mailer has ever been like, boom, this is this is it. I'm doing it. it. Where do I sign up? Seeing that product has been like, okay, they've been on my radar. Now I see it. Let's do this. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, one in the pink. <laughs> Um, I'm just starting out as an artist, and I would like to get into um, reading cards, and my style is somewhat cheeky and irreverent, um, and I did notice a shortage of, of those here. I was actually quite surprised. But the question I have, um, and uh, for any, for all of you, is I'm interested in the creative aspect of it, but not necessarily the mechanics of running a business and getting involved in do you have any pearls or wisdom of where to start and how to start or um, 
companies to contact? Mm, that's a big one. Is that too broad a question? No, no, um, no, not at all. It's no. a good question. Um, you know, it sounds like, what, it sounds just from this very brief thing, like maybe licensing might be a better route for you. Um, because there really is, I mean, 85% of my time is spent running a business and 15% is drawing and, and writing. Um, and you really have to love the business aspect of it or else you will hate your life. Um, so <laughs> it sounds to me like licensing with a larger company that takes care of all the manufacturing might be a better match for your interests and skills. Um, and a lot of the larger companies that have booths kind of around the perimeter, like in the front, you know, the, um, that work with a lot of different artists, um, those are good places to start, just kind of looking at what they're doing, talking to somebody, you know, just go in and ask them what, you know, if you were looking to, if they're looking to pick up new artists, like who you would contact at that company, how you would go about sending in work, that kind of stuff, yeah. Right. Yes. Sir Tax. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else? Oh, we have anyone else? No? All right, and I think that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I encourage you to uh, please drop off your uh, evaluation forms and thank you.